Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Hey there, welcome back to the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Joshua Crouch. Uh, Tersh has a scheduling issue, so he will not be with us on this episode. And I have already screwed things up badly on the back end that nobody's going to see. I've kicked Nip Nick out of our uh, stream at least once. Hopefully I don't do it again. But we have a uh, an exciting episode today, and it all revolves around data. Now, if you're in any of these Facebook groups or you have any business coaching for your business, you know data uh, is important for you to run your business because otherwise you're flying blind. And one of the biggest problems I see is that service businesses, they start with a CRM and they think they're on the right track. The problem is you ask them questions about how their technicians are performing or their average ticket or their average sale or which marketing methods are working the best. And that one's especially true in my case. And I get a lot of answers that they feel like this is working or they feel that's not working instead of actually knowing. So uh, I reached out to uh, Nick, who's our guest today, and he's going to talk about how Data DataCube solves this problem by connecting to your CRMs. So with that being said, if you are watching this live, drop your comments. We will get those questions and comments answered uh, live on the show. Otherwise, here is Nick. Welcome, Nick. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Sorry for kicking you. I, like <laughs> I said, I this is my first time uh, doing the stream stuff. So I, I had a feeling I would do something wrong, and I did. Um, <laughs> All good, man. So with that being said, uh, Nick and I were talking a little bit before the show, um, and he's he's got a lot of experience on the data end of side and a lot of uh, education. So, Nick, why don't you take us with your background, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what uh, – is it data or data cube, or does it matter? Uh, tomato, tomato. I'm not even sure myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it data. We'll call it data cube. Then I, I feel more comfortable that way. So a little bit about okay. yourself and about data cube and what the mission is. What are you guys trying to accomplish? Okay. Um, so for myself personally, I'm really just trying to help business owners. Really. That's what it boils down to. So the avenue I found to do that was data data, because when I was in college, basically I wanted to be, as I was telling you, like an entrepreneur, but I wanted to be able to speak the language of technology uh, so I could have, you know, conver conversations with programmers and know uh, where you go. I'm sorry, I was just reading the comment and know, uh, you know, how to have those conversations specifically. Um, and so basically I got a, a certification in data processing, gathering and visualization uh, from the University of Michigan. Uh, shout out Coursera.org. Highly recommend it for learning. Um, and so basically that inspired me to minor in computer science and then major in my professional selling uh, track as I did. Um, so I was basically just looking for an avenue, as I told you, to be able to combine those, to be able to be able to speak to business owners and be able to help them solve problems when it comes to data, because I know that's like a huge thing in the future economy of being able to parse big data. Um, so, yeah, so uh, that's my background. Um, I've been with the company like 10 months now. Uh, we've come a long way, got, you know, many additions and iterations and updates and all sorts of stuff going on in that time. Um, and then as far as um, data cube, uh, basically where we've come, it originally started with uh, Ishmael. I'm sure everyone watching is familiar. Um, he was trying to get some dashboards made and long story short, hired some programmers to do it. Wasn't what he thought the final deliverable would be or should be. Uh, so he was just venting one day to one of our other owners. And he was like, hey, you know, I got some programmers and designers in my company. Let me see if I can help you. And year and some change, a couple thousand programming hours later, here we are, full-fledged data visualization company. Uh, so basically what we set out to do was 
make businesses data uh, more easily digestible, not so overwhelming um, and customizable. So it's really the point is to not give you some, you know, Warren Buffett kind of spreadsheet that you have to parse through all day, but really just to show you exactly what data points you need to know so that you can at a glance know exactly what's going on with the different parts of your business and be able to make better decisions based off of that. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that topic that you just mentioned, the, the data points that it pulls. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what do you guys focus on? Because there's a lot of data. You can, I mean, most CRMs these days, you can literally pull an endless string of just stuff. <laughs> and you won't know what probably 70% of it is. So what do you guys focus on? Yeah, so it really, we focus on what business owners tell us that they focus on. Um, so that's really the bottom line. So originally we built kind of an out of the box dashboard model based on what Ishmael wanted. Um, and so that's kind of how we structure it now. But then basically anytime I give a demo, I'll say, okay, well, what is important to you? What are you guys trying to dial in on this year? What goals do you guys have? And I get a wide variety of answers. I will get people who are trying to focus in on average tickets or memberships or reviews or whatever the case. Um, and so it's really just whatever people are focused on. There's all sorts of things. I don't want to, you know, we have NDAs. I don't want to give away their secrets, but all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't even think of if you weren't in that business is important to people. So as long as it's important to them, it's important to us. And we take those endpoints and show it to them any which way they want to see them. Yeah. And now my understanding is you guys connect to several uh, very well-known CRMs. Do you want to kind of go through the list just that way in case someone's listening and be like, oh, you guys connect with the CRM I use? Absolutely. Um, so currently we have connections already made to Service Titan. Obviously that's the big monster in the room in the best way. Um, uh, House Call Pro, uh, PulseM, Podium, QuickBooks, Intact, uh, Call Rail, Call Fire, um, uh, what was the price book? I always forget. Op Manager. Um, and then basically, long story short, we can connect to any system with an API is kind of the long story short of it. Um, that's, I mean, I've, as you might imagine, I've gotten all sorts of uh, software that I've heard of since I started doing this. And I've come across like two or three that don't have an API. So as long as it has an API, as long as the software's in the 21st century, you should be good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you have software or a CRM that you're paying for and it does not have an API connection, <laughs> find someone else. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I hate to say that because there's probably <laughs> some good companies out there, but if they have not kept up with open sourcing their information so you can take that information and work with something else, you're not living in 2021. Um, right. Exactly. You know, so... And I think that's what you guys do really well. And, and obviously you guys have a, uh, uh, a gentleman with a, that does a really good job of promoting you guys, um, yep. with his, with his slick, was it six or eight monitors he has in his <laughs> office that he shows. Yep. yep. Um, so from my, from the limited stuff that I've seen, it looks like most of the data, at least the important data points that people concern themselves with would be like sales leaderboards marketing attribution uh maybe re uh, reputation management as far as who's getting reviews csr scorecards um is there anything else that you guys really focus on or you see that's like a really popular thing that people want to track um yeah so all of those um that's absolutely we have dashboards for all of those and then more technicians um financials, um, all sorts of stuff. So it's really, but also we, those are just our out of the box ones, as I kind of attributed to or alluded to. We've gotten all sorts of requests for custom boards, whether it's as simple as uh, memberships, if that's something important to them or zero ticket explanations as far as why zero tickets are happening or why they're not meeting certain sales thresholds um, or just automating extremely complex and man hour consuming Excel sheets. Um, that people have had for a while and turning them into live dashboards so that people don't have to uh, keep spending man hours on that in 2021, you know? Um, so again, sure. it's really whatever business owners are, are valuing at the moment. That's really ultimately. So you, so even though, cause I'm most familiar with Ishmael and his pictures and I think mm -hmm. Stacy four does a good job yeah. because they, they love the color green like I do. Yep. So that one really, <laughs> and you guys do of course too. Of um, course. So it seems like, at least those are the ones I've seen, but you guys can custom create pretty much anything for dashboards. Is that fair to say? 
Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, so it really is, again, just whatever up to a business owner wants. There, there was a comment that if like, what about CRM? That's like Salesforce for, for smaller businesses. Absolutely. So it, again, whatever a business owner wants to see, whether that's uh, a different CRM, as long as it has an API again, um, or a certain dashboard or a certain KPI or a certain ex or certain conditions on certain KPIs that they don't want it to include certain things or only include certain business units or whatever. Um, we do all of that. So it's really just custom tailored to whatever business owners are valuing at the moment. So I guess to, to sum that point up, if whatever CRM you are using, even if you're not in, let's say the home service businesses and you're not using some of the more popular ones that are like trade specific, Mm -hmm. Um, obviously Salesforce is more like a, a general CRM that does a lot of different things really well. Right. Uh, it's kind of like the service Titan outside of service Titan. If you, if that I makes agree. any sense. Yeah. So they have a lot of different functionality, but they, they serve a lot of industries and can be kind of custom made. Yep. You just need to ask whoever your client success manager or whatever their title is, just ask them if they have an API connection or just go. Google it online. If they have an API connection, let's make it happen. Um, yeah, that's typically what I'll do. When people say like a specific software, I'll Google that software name, API. And usually <laughs> there's some documentation that, that says, uh, yeah, these data endpoints are available and all that good stuff. So then it's just a conversation of, you know, how do we connect to it? How do we show you what you want to see? How do we show you the data endpoints that are important to you and not show you the ones that aren't? Sure. So, with that being said, Data Cube has been around for how long? A uh, little over a year. It's been in development for about a year and a half. Um, but I think the first okay. boards went live maybe like 13, 14 months ago. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. So, and that was, I'm assuming it, Ishmael was probably one of the first ones. Um, yeah, I believe he's he the was. first one I remember seeing. Yeah, I believe he was the first or one of the first. Yeah. Not okay. On that one. Hang on but one he's second. Like my... Regardless, got to give it to him. Sorry about that. I knew something weird would happen. My headset died midstream. Oh, all good. <laughs> so we love, are yeah. we are adjusting on the fly here. Yeah, love it. <laughs> so what is? I mean, what's been the feedback? So obviously, you know, as a startup company, and especially a technology company that that um, sorts data, makes it into nice, uh, essentially like an aesthetically pleasing view. What has been the feedback? from contractors and people that have, have started with you guys? Because I you're the client success manager, so I'm assuming you hear feedback, good and bad, uh, more often than most. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the feedback, it kind of varies. It really is just whatever the business owner wanted when they went into it. They'll just give me feedback on that part of it. So whether it was if they wanted the information for themselves um, to make better decisions, to be able to quickly assess whatever's going on, be able to diagnose training opportunities for their employees, then they'll come back and tell me, oh, I love having the information live. I'm no longer you know, spending an hour of my day researching financial statements that I shouldn't be doing in the first place. Or if they had a bunch of uh, Excel sheets they were making, as I alluded to, they'll come back and say, oh, thank you. I can't believe we don't have to do this anymore. We've repurposed this employee that was doing that into actually bringing us money, you know, like, uh, or it's just they put a leaderboard up and then all of a sudden that competition of having the accountability and the guys up on the wall will suddenly make the guys, you know, perform a little better, it puts a little fire under their butt, you know, and they'll go for the ask a little more often. They'll be more inclined to uh, follow up, to be persistent, to overcome an objection or whatever the case. Um, it really just depends on whatever the business owner was trying to accomplish. Um, but overwhelmingly, we have uh, happy customers that got whatever they were trying to get into it, provided that, you know, they had uh, reasonable expectations. You know, if somebody was trying to 10x their business or something like that. I don't know if we've seen that, uh, but you know, just reasonable goals of trying to dial in on your numbers and get people sorted and get people motivated. That I hear overwhelmingly. Well, and that's the thing, right? I mean, the one nice thing, uh, and I'm speaking of service titan here because I don't know uh, some of the other programs how they do. Like the technicians have a tab. At least the technicians in service titan can see their numbers regularly, Absolutely. but they never know how they stack up. And generally speaking, most technicians and most people in general, CSRs, technicians, office staff, there's there's always somebody always has a competitive desire. Some are higher than others. Yep. But most 
often people don't want to see themselves at the bottom of a leaderboard. Like that's just the place that, okay, what I need to start doing something better or I need to find something else to do. Right. Because (laughs) if I am booking calls at the lowest rate and the next person is five percentage points higher than me, I, maybe this isn't for me or I need to get better. I need to ask for training. And that's where I see this as a super efficient way to just look at a dashboard, see what's going on and make business decisions. So that way, like you said, you're not the days of going through Excel, a thousand Excel spread or a thousand rows on a spreadsheet and trying to decipher data and then taking that and making like a, a bar chart or something like all that time wasted is literally a connection point. Now, obviously there's a lot that goes into it to get that connection point. You know, that's where you guys come in, Mm -hmm. but the just knowing, and I talked to Nick a little bit about this before, because one of my biggest struggles as a uh, digital marketing company is I see the calls, I see the leads coming in, but uh, some clients don't track these things the way they should. So it's, it's one of those things like, where does the fault lie? Should it, is it on the marketing company to track these things for them or should the business business owner be doing it? Now, me Mm -hmm. personally, since I was in the contracting world, I feel like I need to help people get Mm -hmm. there, which hopefully this episode and speaking to you guys helps. Even if it's, even if it's not with you guys, just get the importance of tracking, tracking everything. Absolutely. Life business becomes so much easier with data. And I know someone who works at Service Titan, I don't know if she watches the show, but uh, Sarah over at Service Titan, she's part of the marketing team. She literally is like, anytime there's a marketing question, I don't know if you get, I don't know if you met her at uh, Service World or before. Yeah, she's, she is awesome. She literally is like this huge wealth of knowledge. And when she starts asking questions, it gets really like, she wants to know this point and this point and this point. She would actually be a great um, person for you guys to talk to as far as like, Hey, how do we develop this further? Right. (laughs) But um, so what have you seen as far as um, you know, cause I know HVAC, obviously a lot gets talked about like average ticket and stuff like that. Have you seen mostly like HVAC companies jumping to do these dashboards or have you seen some influx of some other trades starting to come on board? Yeah. So primarily we'll see the the top three of HVAC plumbing and electrical. Um, However, yeah, we've seen all sorts of things, whether it be uh, pest control or restoration services or um, uh, garage doors and doors in general, or any type of any type of home service that you could imagine. um, We have seen, Um, It really is just a matter of being able to dial in on exactly what's important to them, again, in their industry um, and be able to show it to them in a way that is, again, actionable and useful. Right. So we've seen all sorts of things and we're always open to to new verticals. I can't I don't think I could speak too much on which ones we've had little conversations with. But, you know, every industry now has this problem of they have so much data. And what do you do with it? You know, how do you actionably uh, capitalize on it? How do you actually parse it so that it's, it's not how like the return that you get from parsing through it outweighs the cost of actually having to parse through it. Every industry is facing that problem right now. So it really is just a matter of being able to dial in on what exactly in that industry or vertical is important to them. And then getting like the, uh, you know, like the, not not to name dropping too much, but the Ishmael equivalent to be able to give us a framework of exactly what is important to them um, and then be able to, you know, let us in that industry. Sure. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, this, and you think about it from a company culture perspective, like I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's owners out there that they think, well, I don't know if all my, I don't know if my people want to everyone to see their numbers. But it's also, a, it can be a transparency thing, right? Right. Uh, my question to you would be, have you seen that having these easy to use dashboards has led to uh, some of your guys' clients using that as like a, um, like a reward system of sorts? Like if, you know, like if we show reviews or we show like CSR booking rate or some, some data point that they deem important, 
use that as a way to, let's say, hey, we're going to bonus employees that get above this threshold or their top three or whatever the case is. Have you seen that becoming a trend? I have. Yeah, overwhelmingly. Um, so as, as an example, at just at uh, Service World, I know he's an open book. I know he wouldn't care if I tell the story. Uh, so Ishmael was telling me how what he'll do is he'll check his average uh, service ticket at, the, at certain points of the month. And he knows, obviously, at what point it becomes profitable and unprofitable. So if it's below a certain point, he'll, too, he'll do a little group chat with the guys and say, hey, you know, I noticed it's a little low this month. If there's anybody who, you know, feels like do like, you know, being the guy, if you have the highest average ticket this month, I'll give you a thousand dollars in cash. And then everyone, you know, his guys are, you know, well compensated as is. So it's not like they're like trying to get that thousand dollars so much, but also the recognition that competition, as we were alluding to, like me, myself, I'm incredibly to a fault competitive, you know? So it's like a, a thing that people like me, like I, I, I want that recognition. I want to be the number one. I don't want to be last. You know, I can't, that's not even a thought to me of being last. So it like will encourage the guys to go for the ask, whether it be on memberships or on an upsell or a turnover to try to push it that little extra mile, overcome that objection a little harder, come back once more where they otherwise would have given up or whatever the case, it really does encourage people to, uh, so just be their best, you know, because if you're in a competition where only the best survive or the best thrive, you know, you got to step up to the plate. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I go back to my the last company that I worked with. We had Service Titan. And as the person who was in charge of the marketing and a lot of the operations stuff internally, um, I would run reports on Monday morning to get similar information so I could kind of pass it out. But the problem is I had to run the reports or I had to manually count this or that, even with service Titan, because there's like 800,000 reports inside of service yeah. Titan to try. And you, you know, you can, you can customize them all, but it's one of those things that it's still kind of like the old days where you put everything on a spreadsheet. It's overload. Like yeah. you, I usually had like, four or five reports. So like, these are my go-tos. Like I need to know the campaign summary, CSR booking, um, you know, technician, average ticket type stuff. Yep. But using that and, and putting that up at a shop where everyone can see it, there's no bias, right? right. Just because this guy is always talking to the service manager. Or this one's always talking to the, the call center manager. Like there's no favorites. Like right. this is just purely data driven, purely based on, if you're good at your job, if you're good at meeting certain criteria. Um, and I think what's really beautiful about putting that out there is you can put multiple data points. Like not everyone's going to be the best selling technician, yeah. but they may be the best at getting reviews or the best at memberships because people sure. trust them. Yep. And having multiple competitions within your business is going to allow for multiple people, hopefully to win um, right. which just brings that culture where everyone's like excited to come to work. Cause as soon as they sell a membership, it's, you know, that, that whole excitement, that, that adrenaline high yep. because they know it's going on the leaderboard. Like they know their numbers are going to change. Yep. And that gamification is yep. becoming so important. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I see that in, um, in our clients. Oh, Hey, Tersh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tersh. I haven't, burnt, I haven't burnt anything down. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, no, I definitely see that in, uh, in our clients. They'll not only like use it for, uh, as you were kind of talking about, if a guy is good at this or not that, it's also like a training opportunity to be able to identify everyone's strengths and weaknesses. So I know Ishmael, again, in particular, he'll have uh, the TVs in like the specific training room. So his managers will go and to have meetings and they don't really even need like a preset like agenda. They just go look at the board and see, well, okay, well, you need, you need to work on this. This is low generally or whatever the case. So you can identify those training opportunities. And then as a, <laughs> um, and then as an extension of that, you know, you'll be able to, uh, you know, set people up with proper training or whether it's like a one-on-one -on -one or you set them up with, you know, you can identify who your strong links are and you get your weak links set up with them, maybe in a shadowing situation or something. Um, so that is something that I, I do hear a lot as far as the feedback on our boards so and training opportunities and being able to reward people for their strengths and lean into their strengths. Um, yeah. Huge, huge thing. Yeah. And to, to play off that point, obviously training, I mean, 
everybody knows there's a shortage of skilled trade workers. Mm. So again, having the data at your finger points where you don't really have to even come up with the new training topic of the week, because you can just talk about what happened last week on a board exactly. and you don't have to prepare and, and do all these other things that again, save you time. They, maybe they save you money because you can hone in on certain things instead of hiring a consultant. Um, I just think that, and I'm, I'm assuming you guys, since you're a data company, agree that this is like data and easy to use actionable insights. This is the future of business in general. Um, I mean, is there anything, I know there's certain things you probably can't tell us. Is there anything coming in the future that you can share with us about DataCube? Um, oh boy. Um, you so, can be careful. Yeah. Don't worry. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm summoning my inner lawyer. Don't worry. Um, basically, uh, we're working on just moving with the technology, just trying to get more adaptive. We're looking at some things as far as like artificial intelligence and being able to take certain things into account for projecting and all that good kind of stuff. Um, and then as well, just being able to serve our, our clients needs better. So we're starting to hear people who have like multi locations a lot more. So we're working on organizing our data to be able to be able to accommodate those people. Um, and then, yeah, just being able to to do what we do, but in a better, more adaptable way, because ultimately that's what the technology space is all about, is just being able to adapt to the moment and rise mm -hmm. to the occasion and fit the needs of whatever the moment calls for. Do you guys have the capacity now? And uh, I know uh, NextGen has multiple locations as, as well as many other businesses. And I, this is becoming, uh, it's becoming a popular trend, even from the marketing side, because of the way Google's algorithm is on the local uh, side of things. Yep. Can you guys split the data right now as is between like location one versus location four? So that way you have separate data at those branches, but also like an overall company dashboard, let's say at headquarters. Absolutely. Unequivocally. Absolutely. Okay. So you guys can actually take that wherever the data points are and separate them so they can compete locally. And then they like, obviously we're talking, some of these companies are getting very big. They can compete locally, but they can also compete regionally, nationally, whatever the case is. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. We are. There's a, it's again all up to whatever the business owner or the franchise head is whatever trying to accomplish. Um, but in any way, that's kind of what we specialize in. However, you want to see data, however it is useful to you or the business owner, that's what we do. That is very cool. Where, uh, um, where should we? If people want to get a demo, is the best place your website? Yeah, um, it's datacube.ai. There's a little button right at the bottom that says request a demo. Um, as of now, you do need an NDA to get a demo um, because we go through Ishmael's build out. Um, so obviously that is like real in, real businesses information. Um, but we're working on filing a, uh, a patent soon. And so at that point, I don't think we're going to be doing or requiring an NDA at that point. Uh, sure. But for now, it's just a simple little 10 question form, kicks you over a little NDA to sign, just put your John Hancock on that. Then I verify it, get you, any, get you a demo. Awesome. And what is, as far as, so let's say someone gets to that point, they, yeah, let's do this. What is, what is the setup time like? Like what, what is the, the time frame from the time they say yes to the time where, Hey, I got actionable data that I can do something with. Absolutely. Um, so if they're working with softwares that we've worked with already, um, the big service Titan house call podium, quick ball, that good stuff. Uh, typically about three to four weeks is our turnaround time right now. Okay. Um, that might change in the future, be a little less. Um, if you have any, uh, like heavy customizations it might be a little longer, uh, but generally three to four weeks. Okay. So three to four weeks, if it's the, probably the bulk of who you guys work with now, if it's Absolutely. something custom, you know, maybe up to like, you know, like two months, something like that. Just so people are aware if they're looking to get data before a certain time of season or something like that, they can have it up and running by this date if they wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Usually even customizations, typically not more than six weeks. It really, uh, really is just a matter of being able to make the initial connection and then tie together whatever data points that they're trying to tie together. So usually for four weeks for out of the box, I say six weeks for custom work. Okay. So there you have it guys. So if, if you guys, uh, anyone listening to this or uh, anyone watching, it's 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 worth spending a little bit of time to at least see what this could do for you so you can imagine what your company may look like. 
because not only is the data important, but the culture of your company is super important and you can help fix these things and even weed out some bad apples. People, maybe, maybe they don't want to be a part of this and they just, you know, it's just not their thing. Weed them out now before it's a problem later. Um, so really thankful for you coming on the show, Nick. Um, I know this was your first podcast, which just happened to be my first, uh, full-time hosting without Tersh to fall back on. <laughs> so I think we knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I think uh, we did all right. Nothing burned <laughs> down. I only kicked you out once. <laughs> <laughs> all good. No, I appreciate you having me, man. I think this went well. I, I enjoyed it very much, actually. Yeah, that was awesome. I really appreciate it. And if you guys need any more information, go to datacube. Now they're fancy. They're a software company, datacube.ai, not .com. So just yep. keep that in mind. Yep. Um, until next time, we'll see you guys later. All right. Later, man. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.